Chapter 5 of the Buddhist Catechism. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Dion Gines, Salt Lake City, Utah. The Buddhist Catechism by H. S. Alcott. Chapter 5 Buddhism and Science. Question Has Buddhism any right to be considered a scientific religion? or may it be classified as a revealed one? Answer. Most emphatically, it is not a revealed religion. The Buddha did not so preach, nor is it so understood. On the contrary, he gave it out as the statement of eternal truths, which his predecessors had taught like himself. Question. Repeat again the name of the Sutta, in which the Buddha tells us not to believe in an alleged revelation without testing it by one's reason and experience? Answer. The Kalama Sutta of the Anguthara Nikaya. Question. Do Buddhists accept the theory that everything has been formed out of nothing by a creator? Answer. The Buddha taught that two things are causeless, that is, Akasha and Nirvana. Everything else has come out of Akisha, in obedience to a law of motion inherent in it, and, after a certain existence, passes away. Nothing ever came out of nothing. We do not believe in miracles, hence we deny creation, and cannot conceive of a creation of something out of nothing. Nothing organic is eternal. Everything is in a state of constant flux, and undergoing change and reformation, keeping up the continuity according to the law of evolution. Question. Is Buddhism opposed to education and to the study of science? Answer. Quite the contrary. In the Sagalawada Sutta, in a discourse preached by the Buddha, he specified as one of the duties of a teacher that he should give his pupils instruction in science and lore. The Buddha's higher teachings are for the enlightened, the wise, and the thoughtful. Question. Can you show any further endorsement of Buddhism by science? Answer. The Buddhist doctrine teaches that there were many progenitors of the human race, also that there is a principle of differentiation among men. Certain individuals have a greater capacity for the rapid attainment of wisdom and arrival at nirvana than others. Question. Any other? Answer. Buddhism supports the teaching of the indestructibility of force. Question. Should Buddhism be called a chart of science or a code of morals? Answer. Properly speaking, a pure moral philosophy, a system of ethics and transcendental metaphysics. It is so eminently practical that the Buddha kept silent when Malunka asked about the origin of things. Question. Why did he do that? Answer. Because he thought that our chief aim should be to see things as they exist around us and try to make them better, not to waste time in intellectual speculations. Question. What do Buddhists say is the reason for the occasional birth of very good and wise children of bad parents, and that of very bad ones of good parents? Answer. It is because of the respective karmas of children and parents. Each may have deserved that such unusual relationships should be formed in the present birth. Question. Is anything said about the body of the Buddha giving out a bright light? Answer. Yes, there was a divine radiance sent forth from within by the power of His Holiness. Question. What is it called in Pali? Answer. Buddha Ransi, the Buddha rays. Question. How many colors could be seen in it? Answer. Six, linked in pairs. Question. Their names? Answer. Nila, Pita, Lohita, Avadada, Mangasta, Prapaspra. Question. Did other persons emit such shining light? Answer. Yes, all our hots did, and, in fact, the light shines stronger and brighter in proportion to the spiritual development of the person. Question. Where do we see these colors represented? Answer. In all viharas, where there are painted images of the Buddha. They are also seen in the stripes of the Buddhist flag, first made in Ceylon, but now widely adopted throughout Buddhist countries. Question. In which discourse does the Buddha himself speak of this shining about him? Answer. 
in the Maha Parinibbana Sutta. Anatta, his favorite disciple, noticed the great splendor which came from his master's body. The Buddha said that on two occasions this extraordinary shining occurs. A. Just after Atathagata gains the supreme insight, and B. On the night when he passes finally away. Question. Where do we read of this great brightness being emitted from the body of another Buddha? Answer. In the story of Sumedha and Dipankara Buddha, found in the Nidana Katha of the Jakata book, or story of the reincarnations of the Bodhisattva Siddhartha Gautama. Question. How is it described? Answer. As a halo of a fathom's depth. Question. What do the Hindus call it? Answer. Tejas. Its extended radiance they call Prakasha. Question. What do the Europeans call it now? Answer. The human aura. Question. What great scientist has proved the existence of this aura by carefully conducted experiments? Answer. The Baron von Reichenbach. His experiments are fully described in his researches published in 1844 to 1845. Dr. Baraduk of Paris has quite recently photographed this light. Question. Is this bright aura a miracle or a natural phenomenon? Answer. Natural. It has been proved that not only all human beings, but animals, trees, plants, and even stones have it. Question. What peculiarity has it in the case of a Buddha or an Arhat? Answer. It is immensely brighter and more extended than in cases of other beings and objects. It is the evidence of their superior development in the power of it he. The light has been seen coming from Dagobas in Ceylon, where relics of the Buddha are said to be enshrined. Question. Do people of other religions besides Buddhism and Hinduism also believe in this light? Answer. Yes. In all pictures of Christian artists, this light is represented as shining about the bodies of their holy personages. The same belief is found to have existed in other religions. Question. What historical incident supports the modern theory of hypnotic suggestion? Answer. That of Chula Panthaka, as told in the Pali commentary on the Dhammapada, etc. Question. Give me the facts. Answer. He was a bhikkhu who became an arat. On that very day the Buddha sent a messenger to call him. When the man reached the vihara, he saw three hundred bhikkhus in one group, each exactly like the others in every respect. On his asking which was Chula Panthaka, every one of the three hundred figures replied, I am Chula Panthaka. Question. What did the messenger do? Answer. In his confusion, he returned and reported to the Buddha. Question. What did the Buddha then tell him? Answer. To return to the Vihara, and, if the same thing happened, to catch by the arm the first figure who said he was Chula Panthaka, and lead him to him. The Buddha knew that the new Arhat would make this display of his acquired power to impress illusionary pictures of himself upon the messenger. Question. What is the power of illusion called in Pali? Answer. Manomaya idhi. Question. Were the illusionary copies of the Arhat's person material? Were they composed of substance, and could they have been felt and handled by the messenger? Answer. No. They were pictures impressed by his thoughts and trained willpower upon the messenger's mind. Question. To what would you compare them? Answer. To a man's reflection in a mirror, being exactly like him, yet without solidity. Question. To make such an illusion on the messenger's mind, what was necessary? Answer. That Chula Panthaka should clearly conceive in his own mind his exact appearance, and then impress that, with as many duplicates or repetitions as he chose, upon the sensitive brain of the messenger. Question. What is this process now called? Answer. Hypnotic suggestion. Question. Could any third party have also seen these illusionary figures? Answer. That would depend on the will of the arhat or hypnotizer. Question. What do you mean? Answer. 
Supposing that fifty or five hundred persons were there instead of one, the Arhat could will that the illusions should be seen by all alike, or, if he chose, he could will that the messenger should be the only one to see them. Question. Is this branch of science well known in our day? Answer. Very well known. It is familiar to all students of mesmerism and hypnotism. Question. In what does our modern scientific belief support the theory of karma as taught in Buddhism? Answer. Modern scientists teach that every generation of men is heir to the consequences of the virtues and the vices of the preceding generation, not in the mass, as such, but in every individual case. Every one of us, according to Buddhism, gets a birth which represents the causes generated by him in an antecedent birth. This is the idea of karma. Question. What say the Vasetha Sutta about the causation in nature? Answer. It says, the world exists by cause. All things exist by cause. All beings are bound by cause. Question. Does Buddhism teach the unchangeableness of the visible universe? Our earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, the mineral, vegetable, animal, and human kingdoms? Answer. No. It teaches that all are constantly changing, and all must disappear in course of time. Question. Never to reappear? Answer. Not so. The principle of evolution, guided by karma, individual and collective, will evolve another universe with its contents as our universe was evolved out of the akasha question does buddhism admit that man has in his nature any latent powers for the production of phenomena commonly called miracles answer yes but they are natural not supernatural they may be developed by a certain system which is laid down in our sacred books the visuddhi marga for instance question what is this branch of science called Answer. The Pali name is Idhi Vidhanana. Question. How many kinds are there? Answer. Two. Vihara, that is, one in which the phenomena working power may be temporarily obtained by ascetic practices, and also by resort to drugs, the recitation of mantras, charms, or other extraneous aids, and sasanics, that in which the power in question is acquired by interior self-development and covers all and more than the phenomena of lakika idhi question what class of men enjoy these powers answer they gradually develop in one which pursues a certain course of ascetic practice called dahyana question can this idhi power be lost footnote sumangala bavira explains to me that those transcendent powers are permanently possessed only by one who has subdued all the passions, klesa, in other words, an arhat. The powers may be developed by a bad man and used for doing evil things, but their activity is but brief. The rebellious passions again dominate the sorcerer, and he becomes at last their victim. End of footnote. Answer. The Bahira can be lost but the sasanika never. When once acquired, lokatara knowledge, once obtained, is never lost, and it is by this knowledge only that the absolute condition of nirvana is known by the arhat, and this knowledge can be got by following the noble life of the Eightfold Path. Question. Had Buddha the lokotara idi? Answer. Yes, in perfection. Question. And his disciples also had it? Answer, yes. Some, but not all equally. The capacity for acquiring these occult powers varies with the individual. Question. Give examples? Answer. Of all of the disciplines of the Buddha, Moggallana was possessed of the most extraordinary powers for making phenomena, while Anatta could develop none during the twenty-five years in which he was the personal and intimate disciple of the Buddha himself. Later he did, as the Buddha had foretold he would. Question. Does a man acquire these powers suddenly or gradually? Answer. Normally they gradually develop themselves as the disciple progressively gains control over his lower nature in a series of births. Footnote. When the powers suddenly show themselves, 
the inference is that the individual had developed himself in the next anterior birth. We do not believe in eccentric breaks in natural law. End of footnote. Question. Does Buddhism pretend that the miracle of raising those who are dead is possible? Answer. No. The Buddha teaches the contrary. In that beautiful story of Kisa Gotami and the mustard seed, but when a person only seems to be dead, but is not actually so, resuscitation is possible. Question. Give me an idea of these successive stages of the Lokottara development in Iti. Answer. There are six degrees attainable by Arhats. What is higher than them is to be reached only by a Buddha. Question. Describe the six stages or degrees. Answer. We may divide them into two groups, of three each. The first two include, one, progressive retrospection, that is, a gradually acquired power to look backward in time toward the origin of things. Two, progressive foresight or power of prophecy. Three, gradual extinction of desires and attachments to material things. Question, what would the second group include? Answer, the same faculties, but inimitably developed. Thus, the full arhat possesses perfect retrospection, perfect foresight, and has absolutely extinguished the last trace of desire and selfish attractions. Question. What are the four means for obtaining idhi? Answer. The will, its exertion, mental development, and discrimination between right and wrong. Question. Our scriptures relate hundreds of instances of phenomena produced by arhats. What did you say was the name of this faculty or power? Answer. Idhi vidha. One possessing this can, by manipulating the forces of nature, produce any wonderful phenomena, that is, making any scientific experiment he chooses. Question. Did the Buddha encourage displays of phenomena? Answer. No. He expressly discouraged them as tending to create confusion in the minds of those who were not acquainted with the principles involved. They also tempt their possessors to show them merely to gratify idle curiosity and their own vanity. Moreover, similar phenomena can be shown by magicians and sorcerers learned in the Lakika, or the baser form of Idhi science. All false pretensions to supernatural attainment by monks are among the unpardonable sins. Tavija Suda. Question. You spoke of a diva having appeared to the prince Siddhartha under a variety of forms. What do Buddhists believe respecting races of elemental invisible beings having relations with mankind? Answer. They believe that there are such beings who inhabit worlds or spheres of their own. The Buddhist doctrine is that, by interior self-development and conquest over his baser nature, the arhat becomes superior to even the most formidable of the divas, and may subject and control the lower orders. Question. How many kinds of divas are there? Answer. Three. Kamavashara, those who are still under the domination of the passions. Rupavashara, a higher class which still retain an individual form, Arapa Vashara, the highest in degree of purification, who are devoid of material forms. Question. Should we fear any of them? Answer. He who is pure and compassionate in heart, and of a courageous mind, need fear nothing. No man, god, Brahma, Rakas, demon, or diva can injure him but some have power to torment the impure, as well as those who invite their approach. End of chapter 5. Recording by Dion Gines, Salt Lake City, Utah.